In this module, we are going to commence with Mundell Fleming model. As the globalization has occurred, the countries are open to trade with each other. It is important to study the open economy model with the Mundell Fleming model. This model is an extension of ISLM model. Also, we can clearly see the effect of different policies under different regimes. For this model, Robert Mundell was awarded a Nobel Prize for his work. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the Mundell Fleming model, understand the effect of fiscal and monetary policy under floating and fixed exchange rate. Let us begin with the understanding of some definitions. Small open economy. It is an economy that participates in international trade but is small enough when compared to its trading partners. Because of this, its policies do not influence the world prices, interest rates or incomes. Fixed exchange rate. It is the exchange rate that is fixed by the central bank of the country. Flexible exchange rate. It is the exchange rate that is determined via the market forces that is by demand and supply of currency in the foreign exchange market. It is allowed to change in response to the changing economic conditions. Monetary policy. It is the policy by which the money supply is controlled in the economy. Fiscal policy. It is the policy by which the taxes and the government expenditure is controlled in the economy by the government. Next, we are going to present the Mundell Fleming model. It is an open economy version of the ISLM model. Being similar to the ISLM model, it focuses on the interaction between the goods market and the money market. Also, like the ISLM model, it explains the short-run fluctuations in the aggregate income and analyze the effects of monetary and fiscal policy on the economy. Moving on to the assumptions of the model, the assumptions of this model are 1. The economy under consideration is a small open economy. 2. There is perfect capital mobility in this small economy. That is, the economy can borrow or lend as much as it wants in the world financial market. The economy's interest rates determined by the world interest rate, that is R star. It works in the following fashion. Let there be a rise in the rate of interest, that is R, in the small economy due to some event in the economy. It would then attract foreigners to start lending to this small economy. For example, by buying this country's bonds. This will lead to the capital inflow in the economy, which would continue to occur till the rate of interest R reduces. Then the capital outflow would occur to earn a higher return abroad. This would continue till R is equal to R star in the world financial market that is R is equals to R star. Third, the price level in this small country that is P is equal to the world's price level that is P star. Hence, P is equals to P star. This implies that the real exchange rate is proportional to the nominal exchange rate as in the ASLM model, we derive the goods market and money market equilibrium schedules. The only difference is the addition of the open economy terms in the IS and the LM curves. We call them IS star and LM star curves and finally, we find out that the simultaneous equilibrium in the economy. Let R be the rate of interest in our small open economy 
and R star be the rate of interest in the world financial markets. Then R is equals to R star because of assumption 1. Derivation of I S star curve. The usual I S curve for closed economy is modified into I S star curve for the open economy by adding net exports and R star that is I S star Y is equals to C bracket Y minus T bracket close plus I bracket R star bracket close plus G plus N X bracket small e bracket close. Equation states that aggregate income is the sum of consumption, investment, government spending and net exports. The IS star is derived from the net export schedule and the Keynesian cross. Now we will see how the IS curve is derived. Consider the figure and panel A which shows the net export schedule. It is a downward sloping curve which shows the relationship between net exports and the exchange rate in the economy. Suppose the exchange rate appreciates. That is, there is an increase in exchange rate from E1 to E2. Thus, the foreign goods become cheaper relative to the domestic goods. Thus, the exports decrease and imports increase which leads to decrease in net exports from NX1 to NX2. This shows that net exports curve is downward sloping for this economy. Now, consider panel B which shows the usual Keynesian cross. Using panel A and panel B, we derive the IS star curve in panel C. Consider an increase in exchange rate from E1 to E2. It lowers the net exports from NX1 to NX2. This leads to shift the planned expenditure schedule downward from AS1 to AS2 which reduces income from Y1 to Y2. Thus, we have the two points A and B. Joining these, we obtain the IS star in panel C shows the IS star curve. Next, we will discuss the derivation of LM star curve. The LM star curve for open economy is derived as follows. The usual LM curve is given by the equation M by P is equals to L bracket R comma Y bracket close. Since R is equals to R star, the LM star curve becomes M by P is equals to L bracket R star comma Y bracket close. Diagrammatically, the LM star is derived as follows. The LM star curve is derived using the LM curve. Consider the figure and panel A. It shows the upward sloping usual LM curve. As R is equals to R star, point E becomes the relevant point in the LM star. Panel B shows LM star curve which is a straight line vertical curve measuring exchange rate on the Y axis and income level on the X axis. This is so because the exchange rate does not enter into LM star. The money supply M is an exogenous variable and the price level P is assumed to be exogenous. Thus, given the world interest rate R star and the LM star schedule, determines the aggregate income. Now, we will understand the simultaneous determination of equilibrium. Using the above IS star and LM star, we have equilibrium for the open economy. We know I A star is equals to Y is equals to C into Y minus T plus I R star plus G plus NX bracket E bracket close down 
and m star is equals to m by p is equals to l bracket r star comma y bracket close there are two endogenous variables y and e in the model and the policy variables are g t m p and r star the simultaneous equilibrium occurs at the point of intersection of i star and lm star it shows the equilibrium e and y star at which the goods market and the money market clear the diagrammatic representation of the simultaneous equilibrium is represented in the given figure further we will discuss the effect of the monetary policy and the fiscal policy under the fixed exchange rate regime and flexible exchange rate regime consider the given figure the economy is at equilibrium at point e1 the rate of exchange is e1 and the level of income is y1 let there be an expansionary fiscal policy it leads to a rise in the government expenditure or a fall in the taxes now this has stimulative effect on the aggregate demand in the economy and due to which i s star curve will shift to the right that is i s star 1 and i s star 2 as shown by the figure the new equilibrium occurs at point e2 at this point the exchange rate increases from e1 to e2 however the level of income remains at y1 an important question emerges that why the income level remains same in contrast to the closed economy in the closed economy when expansionary policy occurs the aggregate demand increases which includes the demand for money also this increase in demand for money leads to a rise in the rate of interest in the economy but this is not possible in a small open economy because as soon as domestic rate of interest rises above the world interest rate the capital flows in from abroad which pushes the domestic rate back to the world interest rate hence fiscal policy under flexible exchange rate is ineffective now we will discuss fiscal policy and its impact under the fixed exchange rate fixed exchange rate system is a system in which the central bank fixes the value for the purchase and sale of domestic currency consider the figure in this figure we measure exchange rate on the vertical axis and income on the horizontal axis initial equilibrium occurs at point e1 where the is star 1 curve and lm star 1 curve intersect suppose the exchange rate is fixed at e1 this is let us say higher than the equilibrium exchange rate this is higher than the equilibrium exchange rate then the arbitrators will buy the foreign currency in the foreign exchange market and sell the same to the central bank and earn a profit this will lead to an increase in money supply that is lm star curve will shift to the right to lm star 2 this will result in a decline in the equilibrium exchange rate suppose there is an expansionary fiscal policy in the domestic economy then either government spending will increase or taxes will decrease to stimulate the domestic spending due to which i s star curve will shift to the right the initial equilibrium occurs at e1 a shift in the is star 1 to is star 2 curve disturbs the equilibrium level since there is a fixed exchange rate the bank must increase money supply that is the lm star 1 curve shifts to lm star 2 curve which leads to new equilibrium at point e2 the point e2 is associated with an income level y2 which is higher than the previous level y1 however 
the exchange rate is fixed thus under fixed exchange rate regime a fiscal expansion raises the income level in the economy this is in contrast to the fiscal expansion under flexible exchange rate system now we will discuss the effect of monetary policy under flexible exchange rate under monetary policy the central bank of the country increases the money supply consider the given figure the economy is initially in equilibrium at point e1 where the rate of exchange is e1 and the income level is y1 suppose the government follows an expansionary monetary policy then lm1 star curve will shift to lm2 star curve due to increase in money supply this results in the new equilibrium which occurs at e2 the point e2 is associated with rise in the income level from y1 to y2 and the exchange rate decreases from e1 to e2 here the monetary policy influences the income level by changing the exchange rate now we will understand the effect of monetary policy under fixed exchange rate the monetary policy implies an increase or decrease in money supply consider the figure the economy is in equilibrium at point e1 where is star 1 and lm star 1 curves are intersecting the rate of exchange is e1 and the level of income is y1 suppose an expansionary monetary policy is followed this results in shifting lm1 star to lm2 star the new equilibrium occurs at point e2 this is associated with an increase in income level and a decline in the exchange rate but the exchange rate is fixed already by the central bank the arbitrators will sell the domestic currency to the central bank this leads to a decrease in the money supply of the domestic currency in the market which causes lm2 star to return to the initial level the income level and the exchange rate level remains the same even after an expansionary monetary policy thus the monetary policy is totally ineffective in the fixed exchange rate Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module we discussed the Mundell Fleming model for a small open economy. It is an open economy version of the ISLM model. Being similar to the ISLM model, the model focuses on the interaction between the goods market and the money market. Also Like the ISLM model it explains the short run fluctuations in the aggregate income and analyze the effects of monetary 
and fiscal policy on the economy. The ISLM curves were derived for the small open economy and equilibrium in the domestic country was determined. Further, the monetary and the fiscal policies were discussed. The fiscal policy was found to be effective in fixed as well as in flexible exchange rate whereas the monetary policy was found to be effective only in the flexible exchange rate system.